Hello, my name is Tom. We are here at Game Changer Audio, and this is the Motor Synth Mark II. In this video, I want to talk about the Motor Synth sound architecture. That means that I'm going to look at the signal path polyphony settings, some of the screens that allow you to change those settings, as well as audio inputs and outputs. But first, I'm going to attempt to define the Motor Synth based on its sound architecture. A pretty useless task, I am sure. The Motor Synth Mark II is digitally controlled, two parts analog, electromechanical, and one part digital, semi-polyphonic, multi-timbral, and multi-part synthesizer. Okay, let's slow down and dissect it. The motor synth, quite obviously, is digitally controlled. All sound generating and modifying modules, regardless of them being analog or digital, are digitally controlled. You can control all of the parameters with the knobs and encoders on the front panel, with the screen encoders in deeper menus, with CV sources and MIDI sources. And all of the parameters can be saved in presets and projects. For example, if we're talking about the motor voices, the signal path is fully analog, only it's digitally controlled, for obvious benefits. Two-part analog electromechanical refers to the two of the three available voices on the motor synth, and those are the motor voices, the core part of this instrument. The eight brushless DC motors act as electromechanical tone generators. One motor produces one pitch at a time. They are split between the two motor voices, which means that each voice can produce up to four musical pitches in polyphony. Each voice can be set either to the electroinductive output coming from the magnetic pickups, or to one of the three optical wave shapes imprinted on the optical discs and read by infrared optical sensors. The output from each motor passes through an analog amplifier and then into an analog filter, so the whole signal path of each motor voice is fully analog. This next example is based on a factory preset called Suiting Motors. It showcases the raw electroinductive output from motors that pass through an all-pass filter. One part digital refers to the remaining voice on a motor synth, called DCO or digital voice. It consists of four digital oscillators going through digital amplifiers and into a digital multi-mode filter. Its signal path mimics the motor voices, only in digital realm. Many controls like amp envelope and acceleration and brake are the same for digital voice and motor voices, and the digital filter copies the analog filter both in functionality and sound. It is, however, possible to route the digital voice through the analog filters of the motor voices, making it a hybrid voice, but more about that later. The digital voice doesn't have a dedicated set of knobs on the front panel. Instead, it is mostly controlled through a dedicated screen with the screen encoders. And it is so because we view the digital voice as an additional feature. The core sound of the synthesizer, the motors, have a unique sound of their own. And that uniqueness comes with its possibilities and limitations. One of the limitations is that the waveforms are physically imprinted on optical discs. You have a square wave there, but you can't modulate the pulse width. The DCO extends the sonic possibilities, and you can absolutely add a pulse with modulating oscillator, wave folding, or noise to the mix.
As mentioned before, in the default setup, the motor synth can produce up to four musical pitches in polyphony. Each motor and digital oscillator passes through an individual envelope controlled amplifier and is controlled by an individual pitch envelope called acceleration and brake. The filter section is where each voice becomes paraphonic. Four motors of each motor voice and the four digital oscillators of the digital voice are mixed together and sent through one filter each. Three filters together, one for each voice. Three paraphonic voices. It is also possible to set individual voices to duophonic or monophonic settings, mixing more than one motor or digital oscillator per note, which oftentimes leads to a more powerful sound. This affects how the amp envelope retriggering works and the glide functionality. The motor synth voices could also be called layers. Each key press triggers a note, and that note gets three layers – motor voice 1, motor voice 2, and the digital voice. The voices act as layers in multi-timbral setup. Each voice has its own controls for volume, waveform, scale, amp envelope, acceleration and break, as well as the filter. And there are no set rules for what each voice should do in a mix. Let's say I want to create a pad sound. I personally find myself often reaching for the first voice as the core of my sound, for no real reason. I build that sound and then I go for the second motor voice to add low end, and then usually I go for the digital voice to add some metallic overtones, noise, chaos, randomness, and that sort of thing. I will get to this example in a second, but first I want to show you the notes to voices screen, where you can see that all three voices are responding to built-in keypad, MIDI controller, sequencer and arpeggiator. That means that regardless of which performance tool I'm using, all of them will trigger all voices at the same time, like layers. Let's take the same sound patch as before, but instead of using each voice as layers, make them be separate parts instead. Let's go back to the notes to voices screen, and here I already programmed each voice to correspond to different controller. The motor voice 1 will now respond only to MIDI input. Voice 2 will only respond to the built-in keypad. And the digital voice will only respond to the built-in sequencer.
The main output of the motor synth is a single jack socket, and by default it outputs a mono signal with all three voices mixed together, and you can use a simple pip sleeve jack cable to get the output from the synthesizer. The alternative is to have dual mono output by switching the synthesizer to the split voice setting. In the split mode, use an insert cable with a TRS jack on one end and two TS jacks on the other end. In this mode and with this cable, each motor voice is routed to an independent channel, and you can then post-process them however you want. In this next example, I'm using the previous sound patch, but now I'm panning voices hard left and hard right. You can, of course, do a lot more post-processing than simple panning. You could send voice number one as a mono signal into a stereo delay unit and then have the stereo output panned hard left and right, and then use the second voice as a bass line, send that through a distortion box and into a bass cab, or any other setup that you could think of. The digital voice has several routing options. The default one is where it is mixed together with the motor voices at the master output. And if you're in the split voice setting and using an insert cable, the digital voice will be present on both channels. Alternatively, you can mix the digital voice with one or both motor voices before the analog filter of that motor voice. This means that the digital voice goes through its own digital filter and instead of being mixed at the main output, it then goes through the analog filter. In this setting, the digital voice works better as an extension of the motor voice. For example, the motors cannot produce a white noise signal, but the digital voice can. And white noise can be nicely used for generating percussive transients. So, in a percussive patch, I'm using the digital voice set to noise, going through a resonant high-pass filter, and then mixed together with the second motor voice and going through the analog filter. Now, the analog filter will determine the character of both motor voice 2 and the digital voice. And in terms of output, if you're using the split voice setting with an insert cable, the digital voice will not be present on both channels, but only on the second voice's channel. Tiny but a very useful feature of the digital voice routing is the ability to reduce the motor volume when mixing the DCO with motor voices. This is important because both of them are mixed together before the analog filter, and if you're applying a lot of distortion in the filter, the lower component of that mix could get lost. The input signal can be used for vocoding or for ducking, gating, or triggering the motor synth, and I will explore these options in a separate video. But what I'm now most concerned with is the input routing options. 
You can route the input the same way you can route the digital voice. You can mix it with a motor synth at the master output, or mix it with one or both of the motor voices before the analog filter. And finally, I want to talk about the send and return effects loops for both motor voices. The mini jack sockets on the back panel allow you to send each voice to external effects and then route it back to the motor synth before the filter of that particular voice. All you need is an insert cable, but this time with a mini jack on the stereo end. This can be useful in several different scenarios. For example, if the distortion on the filter section is not enough for you, you can send a voice to a heavier distortion box and then back into the filter. Or if you want to extract the raw output of the motors and bypass the filter, you can use the send channel and not return the signal back to the synthesizer.